Hey, Foot Clan, we have a jam-packed, awesome show for you today. Someone other than me is spinning the wheel of shame. We cover eight more matchups. We talk about Zeke, some player news like Jamar Chase's injury. Make sure you like this video, leave a comment, enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers. Back with you for Friday, October 28th. I had been promised football time, Mike. You What's know, with this Thursday night? Well, I, um, I made no promises. I sent hopes and dreams. And your hopes and dreams did not... I, I, they were all injured. I, I, I take umbrage with that because I believe you had a glass full of water. Yes. It was overflowing. You... You really made me expect a great offensive output. And what's funny is we last kind night's game. Of got one. I know it's like <laughs> it, it was it hit forty nine points, which yeah. is like a really good Yeah, great games for, you know, Demarcus Robinson. <laughs> and Bateman, Kenyon Drake. Who had the was it was it Duvernay that had the rushing touch? Yes, yeah, Duvernay and, had the rushing touch. Oh, Look, that was that killed me. Here's the summary. People were crying because Mark Andrews. Yes. Rashad Bateman. And Gus Edwards were all injured in the game. Re-injured, injured, whatever you want to say. Right. Mark Andrews' injury was uh, a new one. Shoulder injury. Gus Edwards, a new one. Hamstring. And then Rashad Bateman was the foot. And so you were disappointed, bummed out, complete goose from Rashad Bateman. Played the first four snaps with the first team and then obviously had an issue. So if you're like myself, you played him and then you got nothing. And then, and then Tom Brady right now is not providing fantasy value for uh, this roster the way that he – and for himself, like for players that have played him. It's just been a slog for Tom Brady. 325 yards. I think he's number one in the league. It's touchdowns, though. Yeah, he's number one in the league in yards. He just – they're not sustaining drives. And it, that's the reason why at the beginning of the week, for me it was I'm not moving on from Brady. It was because that he's getting the yards – it it should figure itself out, but now after another week with a with a you know not a terrible matchup here for Brady three twenty five and one are you still holding on to the hope that he's going to figure it out? I, I I'm still holding on to the hope because he's throwing with, the ball forty four times. But with your with, actions of starting Tom Brady, um, it's always going to depend on what my options are. But yeah, I mean, he had another touchdown in this game that I believe it was a Leonard Fournette uh false start took oh, that play yeah, the, back. The Chris Godwin one that was about no, to happen. No, no, no. It was uh, there was Kate Otten caught a touchdown. Okay, yeah. well, there was a Kate Otten, then there was the the there false. Was a, there were several. The false start by Fournette was. Uh, yes, Godwin, Godwin was going to be in, in the flat. Godwin yeah. went in motion and was wide open, and I'm screaming at the television. I'm like, yes, and then there you was can't, no play. Right now, Brady, Rodgers, and Russell, their teams are scoring significantly fewer points yeah. through the first, not, not two games, not three games. We're eight games in for Tom Brady, and they can't run the football. They're the worst rushing team in all of the National Football League. Fournette, yeah, he scored. He was 9 for 24. They just lost Shaq Barrett to a torn Achilles, who was their best defensive player. They're in soups trouble. Oh, yeah. And there's a spiral element here. Like, Tom Brady's not under contract. And I know the divorce, it just got finalized, and um, a lot of people would say, well, now he, he's just going to play football forever. Not if he stinks. Right. They need. They miss Rob Gronkowski. They miss Antonio Brown. If he stinks this year, and wants to play football next year, there will be a team that signs Tom Brady. Yeah, but, but that won't help you because he stinks. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I will say this. He he uh, he had a couple of throws that looked very un-Tom Brady. You know, uh, skipped a pass to to a guy where it's like, you, you know, you don't want to take one or two or three bad throws and hold it against the players. It's just you're not used to seeing any 
of these like really egregious uh miss throws and also watching him oh man whenever he rolled out a little bit and if you call it run yeah. um it was that was that was not fun watching Isaiah likely went 6 for 77 and a touchdown he will be the big pickup if Mark Andrews is going he'll be the big pickup anyways cuz Mark Andrews we're not going to know come waiver day whether or not he's going to play the next week and likely is a valuable asset in the passing game. He he was the reason that the that Lamar Jackson didn't totally destroy your weekend on a Thursday night. Like he ended up was, all right. It was a brutal start to the game for Lamar Jackson and, and the the Ravens overall in the first half they it, they could not get it going and I mean he lost Mark Andrews. You lost Rashad Bateman and you're watching this game just with with dread of here we go, another awful, awful Lamar game. This he, he didn't explode by any means, but two thirty eight and two to add on to his uh you know forty three rushing yards. Yeah, he was good. It, it was it was a a an okay performance, especially considering everything was in the second half and without his his top weapon. So if likely can step on, into the void of you know, of Andrews or Bateman, like that's a really big he, deal. He can and he has to because th this offense is set up to use the tight end as their primary option. There's not many tight ends out there that can even uh, have six for 77 and a touchdown right. in any situation. So, I, you know, likely was talked all preseason, all camp, you know, what were they calling him, like baby Andrews? Like he was, you know, getting so much buzz. And so, yeah, if Andrews misses time, likely is, he's probably like a, Top four play. It could be. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday, a weekly giveaway to a supporter of the show at jointhefoot.com. Today's winner, stash underscore bro. Stash bro. Stash bro. $100 to fantasychamps.com. Congratulations and thank you for supporting the show. We appreciate you. Uh, Jointhefoot.com. That's our fantasy football community. So check it out. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Why don't we talk about more injuries? That's fun. Uh, yeah. Jamar Chase expected to be sidelined four to six weeks with a right what? hip injury it's a fracture likely to go on IR and uh injury expert Matthew Betts from our show says uh can't rush this thing not gonna have surgery but you have to wait it out and it's gonna be closer to six weeks than four in his opinion yeah he hasn't been added to the IR as of right now uh, during this recording and they're genuinely because they're, get, they're getting another report. they're getting another report yeah. but it's literally they the doctors are saying that they're hesitant because they think he might heal faster just because of how crazy his body is, which I don't know. That sounds, <laughs> sounds a little silly. Yeah. What? What? That's, that's the true. Report? Yeah. That's, that's actually we've, true. We've analyzed your body and you're a contender to heal faster. I mean, he is stronger, faster, but it's, it's bone. Yeah. Like, it's milk, Mike. It's milk. <laughs> Do you know how much milk he drinks? But, yes, so uh, we'll see if he goes Mac on Mac Jones IR. will be back in two weeks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mac, m most guys wouldn't leave the field. <laughs> uh, that's the crazy thing is Jamar hurt the end. You know, he hurt himself. Yeah, and he came back. And he came back. But, um, look, the, the ramifications, they're significant. You're not your, – your upside is slightly capped if you're Joe Burrow. J Jamar Chase yep. is a difference maker. Uh, you know, T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd steps into a real wide receiver two category. Yeah, Tyler Boyd is is a pretty important pick. And Hayden Hurst. You know, we yep. were talking about playing like Marquise Goodwin. Um, if if DK Metcalf is gone and you can hope for some points off the waiver, I checked my waivers and Tyler Boyd was there in a couple of places. I mean, he is he's more rostered than a Marquise Goodwin, but he's a really important pickup in the games in which uh, since the three of those wide receivers have been together in games that T Higgins misses or uh, that Jamar Chase misses, he's had a lot of really good performances the my top fear overall for this injury is what what does this do to the offensive philosophy of the Cincinnati Bengals because they had just become so much fun to watch so fun for fantasy football 
do we get back to, well, we're going to try and give Joe Mixon the ball 20 plus times. And I, I think that's a strong possibility. Yeah, that's, that is a scary outcome for a team that really unleashed it. Here's a perfect example. Ian Harditz uh, tweeted this out. Uh, Tyler Boyd in 13 games with Joe Burrow, but without one of Jamar Chase or T. Higgins. Here are his finishes in full PPR. Wide receiver 5, 9, 9, 10, 15, 17, 20, 28, 31, 36. So those are all top 36 performances. 51, 63, and 67. So he's, he's a really solid option. Yes. Russell Wilson's going to start. Hooray. So there you go. Um, <laughs> Devontae Adams, dealing with a bad flu, expected to suit up in week eight. Yeah, he's missed uh, back-to-back practices entirely. And then Darren Waller limited in practice on Wednesday and Thursday with the hamstring. Hunter Renfro back. Okay. And Matt then Collins. and then we're still we're still <laughs> waiting on this Ezekiel Elliott situation. Multiple reports this morning, uh, really flip flop in both directions. I, I could tell you, I I I did some digging this morning and listened to an interview from this morning with Mike McCarthy, um, where he was talking about. He's going to trust the process with the doctors, but that Ezekiel Elliott was out bouncing around at practice. People are telling him, like, Cal calm down, like, take it easy. Um, he said he's, you know, it's really, this is an injury where it's not like he's going to re-injure it. It's a pain tolerance thing. Zeke is a tough guy. They have their bye week next week, though, um, and that was brought up in that interview to him. So I, I, I say it's, like, genuinely 50-50. Brooks and I were talking because he's the Cowboy uh, fan Brooks thinks he does not play I think Zeke does play but it, it's it's really could go either way right now yeah Clarence Hill Cowboys beat writer said he's not expected to play because he'll get that extra week off Mike McCarthy improving and uh, has a chance to play either way though the question for fantasy players is do you have the guts to play right like, it almost feels like it doesn't it doesn't matter whether he plays or not because you're playing Pollard either way Yep. Right, Pollard's a good play this week. Agreed. And because they said if he plays, he's going to be limited. And then if he plays and is limited, are you starting Zeke is the question against Chicago. Hopefully not. I, I like, think are you going Kareem Hunt or Zeke with a with the limited tag and the, the chance of being, you know, they're already 50-50 split, these right. guys. I, I would go Zeke uh, in that Zeke situation. over Kareem? Yeah, I, I would. He's going to have more carries. It's a better matchup. You're at home favored by nine and a half or ten points, something like that. I, the chance of a touchdown, I think, are higher for Ezekiel Elliott if he plays. The The thing with the Tony Pollard side, the, I'll just be honest, the entire reason I was scratching and clawing for any information is because in the DraftKings lineup that we're revealing, I couldn't decide if I wanted Tony Pollard in. And his upside case is very different for his price point. So I feel like it does make a difference uh, for whether or not you can have him as just a good play, like he's my start of the week either way, or a smash He's going to be a top five running back. Alan Lazard said he probably won't play Sunday night. Let's just mark him out then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Would that make things easier on your uh, management of your roster, Mike? Uh, yeah, personally, and I know that a lot of people out there in fantasy football, the players are always the, the most optimistic of anybody. Like, no, 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 no doubt. No doubt I'm playing this weekend. And then five minutes later, Ah, uh, they've been marked out. If the guy is saying he probably won't play, just let him rest. Like take it, shoot for next week. Mark him out. Move on. We've got eight games to cover in the matchups today. A couple quick updates here before we get to them. The Saints they added Juwan Johnson to the injury report. Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry, Adam Ta Adam Troutman still didn't practice. Right. So this is just like. It's almost like you're living in the twilight zone, and it's just the same weekly reports right now with the Saints. The Lions, uh, head coach Dan Campbell, this is Jason's losing his mind here. <laughs> Amon Ross St. Brown in the concussion protocol, with, trending towards playing. Without a concussion. He's mm -hmm. in the protocol. So he didn't get a concussion. It was yes. fine. But he can't practice. Well, he wasn't fine because he had – I don't, yeah, I don't the, remember the scientific name that they're looking for, but it's like they're – you're wobbly, where you, you get hit in the head and... It's uh, a ataxia. Ataxia, ataxia. Yeah. yes, that's it. But good news, not a concussion. Yeah, but we're going to put you in the protocol. What if right, the protocol, well, and because he can't practice in full. What if the protocol is, like, super fun, and that's why these guys get into it? <laughs> it's just like... Maybe. It's a party. Yeah, it's like a spa treatment or something. <laughs> I'm not ready to return to full practice yet. I'm I've got some ataxia coming on. Like, well... I should not joke about concussions. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. 
Sure. But but this is it's been confusing is the, is the reason that we're joking because uh, of all these reports like you don't have a concussion but you got to be in the protocol but then you can't practice but then you don't have a concussion it's just how do you bewildered. possibly get out of a protocol that you shouldn't be in in the first place <laughs> Oh man you're trapped you're trapped forever yeah. Prove to us He's that not you're... showing the standard yeah. post concussion like, symptoms Cuz I never I shouldn't be here Yeah but we'll see. he's but he's trending to play so DeAndre Swift full practice Mike Woo! TJ Hawkinson, limited. Josh Reynolds, limited. All right, that was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Yesterday, we covered the Broncos, Jaguars, the London game, the Panthers, Falcons, Bear oh, by the way, Panthers, Falcons, winner, <laughs> winner of that game, sole possession of first place. Yeah. That's oh true. Oh my goodness. Go Panthers. Go P because the Panthers what? are one of the Soul worst possession. teams in the National Football League. <laughs> and if the Panthers as one of the worst teams in the National Football League can be atop the division at not 2 weeks in. Right. 8 weeks in. Oh, I love that chaos. It's there's it's, it's the leadership of Baker Mayfield. There's hope for us all, guys. All they needed to do was get rid of that bum Christian McCaffrey and they could win games. Speaking of the Panthers, uh Chuba Hubbard was just ruled out. Oh, that's oh, good. good. I'm playing against Deontay Foreman this week. <laughs> that's super. Bears, Cowboys, Dolphins, Lions, Cardinals, Vikings, Raiders, Saints, the other games we covered. Getting into it today, the New England Patriots at three and four take on the New York Jets, who are five and two. DraftKings Sportsbook line Patriots minus two and a half. The over under is forty and a half. And uh we know Mac Jones is gonna get the start in this one. The Jets have won four straight games, including over the Broncos last week. Their recipe has been running the football, playing defense, not doing too much with Zach Wilson. And by not doing too much, I mean four games in, Zach Wilson has one passing touchdown. Mm -hmm. And so now they have made the adjustment. They went out and pursued James Robinson in, in light of the Brees Hall injury. Michael Carter and James Robinson are supposed to handle this backfield. Do, will they have enough? Uh, probably not for this matchup. I uh, James Robinson is... Breaking news. Another one? Chuba Hubbard is out. Ezekiel Elliott, out. Oh. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, <laughs> hey, you get, no, 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 you're locked. No, I'm not locked. You're we locked. haven't had this segment yet. You're locked. No, no, no. I already had him in, and Boop. you're locked. I had him in yesterday. <laughs> Come on. Owl, get out of here. Thank you. Owl. Also, Brooks was right. You were wrong. That is also yeah, true. Yeah. That was the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, ah, yeah, you were wrong. I, you can't I play lost. Him. You're wrong. You can't change. It's going to be very, it's very funny to me to think about the listeners who. Knew that information. This whole time we're discussing Ezekiel Elliott being available, not available. Hey, yeah, it happens. So, um, <laughs> crazy, crazy. All right, um, where are we? Have some dignity for the contest, Jason. I, I am full <laughs> dignity intact. Unbelievable. All, All right. right, we have, uh, where are we? We're talking, talking about, about the, the, Jets. the Jets and the Patriots. So, on the, Can you start any Jets players? Let me ask that question because... Not with confidence at all. J Jason, do you have do you have flex confidence in Michael Carter in this game? Uh, he would be the one that I would be willing to flex, yeah. I mean, you, you don't know whether the squeaky wheel of Elijah Moore is going to get the targets. We do know Corey Davis is out for this game, and Garrett Wilson is talented. So those two guys are like a... a a shot in the dark you're hoping for just their athleticism to come through but this isn't a good matchup for them so I would not want to play either of them but Michael Carter James Robinson is brought in they said they're going to work him in slowly you don't expect him to be very involved so I think Michael Carter is the only guy that you could say he's going to touch the ball enough times to be fantasy relevant outside of him I don't want any New York Jet yeah Corey Davis is out Elijah Moore Garrett Wilson will have a couple chances each but not a lot and uh, you've got New England coming off the defeat against Chicago. Um, you know, it's an important game. If if the Jets can win this one, they'll be 6-2, and two and they'll send New England to 3-5. and five. It's, yeah, that, if I'm playing any of the wide receivers, I'm if I can choose between the two, I'm putting Garrett Wilson out there. But again, no confidence. I mean, like, this game, it's going to end up being like Tyler Conklin. But there's, or, or Uzama or yeah, something. But there's no yeah. way that I'm... I'm, you know, giving advice to start them. All right, Jacoby Myers, only six targets the last two weeks. Do 
you expect that to change with Mac Jones coming back as the starter? I do. I, I think Jacoby... Uh, Great, I'm playing against him. <laughs> I think Jacoby Myers is an okay play. The The target share that he had with Mac Jones was very good. We talked about him being kind of a, a Deontay Johnson type of player where he's leading in targets, target market share, and in a full PPR, I think he is a, an okay play here. The, the Jets defense, though, has been very, very good. Um, they've got, uh, who is that sauce Gardner? That's been just really <clears throat> great South. So it's not a great matchup here for anyone. The running backs for the Patriots are really where you would expect the fantasy points to come from. Well, Mondre has been a top 10 running back three of the last five weeks yeah. and a top 24 in all five. Yeah. I mean, he's been, he, he's been great, but that has been primarily with very plus matchups combined with, um, the right. absence of, right. Damian Harris now Damian Harris was back last week and we don't know for sure was that an indication because Damian Harris wasn't very involved was that an indication that this is Ramondre's team and Damian Harris is the backup I doubt that I, I think that was as well I think that was them bringing him back from his hamstring injury slowly um we and got, Ramondre was playing well we got an update from Matthew Betts our injury expert who said uh he doesn't think that Zeke's probably going to play or will be effective if he's active. So <laughs> okay. he hasn't gotten All the right. news yet, but his instincts say he probably won't play. He just posted that? He just posted oh, that. Oh, that one's embarrassing. That's a good At yeah, least when no, I said it. he was right. It, I mean. Yeah. At least when I said it, the news hadn't broke yet. The Steelers at 2-5 and five take on the 6-0 and oh Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles coming back off the bye, and they're 10.5-point home favorites. The over-under is 43-and-a-half. Uh, the, the Eagles have been steady, right, in their performances. They just... They wear you down, even if it doesn't go the right way to start the game. But Jalen Hurts, um, fantasy players, super excited to get him back into their lineups. Steelers have given up the NFL's sixth most yards per attempt, the third most passing yards, um, the third most passing touchdowns. Yeah, this is a Should good be spot. a good week for A.J. Brown and Devontae mm -hmm. Smith. What is the I'm curious what the reception totals on the year are between those two. So Devontae Smith is sitting at... 33 receptions for 397. Okay. How, say that again. 33 for 397. 33 for 397. 33 for 33 receptions for AJ Brown as well. Wow. For 503. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you'd, you'd prefer to have AJ Brown between the two of them, but Devontae Smith has been, he's been solid. Miles Sanders averaging 19.7 opportunities per game. You're going to play him. Yes, you are. Dallas Goddard been s solid at the tight end position. That's the one area that the Steelers have given up not a lot of points, but schedule adjusted. They're middle of the pack. Yeah, I mean, you're, I, I don't think there's any eagle that is normally started that you're not going to start in this matchup. I will say that the Pittsburgh Steelers' defense is getting healthier. It's something to watch. They've been better the last few games, and I would expect that that, that like three or four game stretch when they lost everybody and they were just the worst. I don't think they're a terrible defense. And uh, T.J. Watt is back to practice. He's not going to be active for this game, but he's coming soon. So just keep that in mind as you look at Steelers matchups uh, the second half of the year. What on earth do fantasy players do with Najee Harris? He has not oh, hit man. 12 fantasy points in any what? weeks. No. Yeah. 11.9, I think he hit one time. Yeah. And I'm seeing Al Borland, who has him, shaking his head. Look, Al's been in a – he's been trying to sell some players. I've thought about trying to trade for Najee because of the name. Yeah. But then I go and I look at uh -huh. the box scores. He this is exactly it's just a problem. Like his his it his sucks. He's not good on the ground. He really isn't. He hasn't been good on the ground. He's been a volume play. He's been a every play, you know, it's great that he's out there. Who's but got he's just not doing it. More average fantasy points this year. Oh boy. Najee Harris or Khalil Herbert, the backup running back for the Chicago Bears. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think you asked that question unless it's Khalil Herbert. <laughs> it is Khalil Herbert. What's funny is as we were putting our DraftKings lineups together, <clears throat> you scroll through all these running backs, you scroll, you scroll, you keep looking, you're trying to find someone in the $6,000 range, and here at $5,700 is Najee Harris. I'll put him in, Jason. And I did not <laughs> click him in. That's how bad it is in full PPR for Najee. I do think there are brighter days ahead because he's, I believe Najee, extremely talented. I also believe Najee injured I, I think this this season uh that foot injury that he's been, just been playing through is not good so dynasty wise Mike I know you've got him in dynasty I'm I'm not selling him I would be trading for him redraft wise I'm not excited about the rest of the season from 3.9 down to 3.3 a carry this year Ooh. 
for Najee Harris not catching the football as often at all. Um, it's it's troubling, and you have to adjust your view of him. Like, would you rather have Raheem Mostert? Yeah, yeah, uh, for the rest of the season, and that's that's wild to think about. Raheem Mostert was not drafted some places. Yeah, Najee was a first rounder. Deontay, George Pickens, I think they're both playable, but with great trepidation. Um, George Pickens has been uh, – I mean, this isn't the best matchup, right? The Eagles' defense well, is, is a great, very poor matchup. No, that's that's what I'm saying. But I George Pickens has really been winning me over when, I, when I've when i dug deeper into how he's been playing with Kenny Pickett. You look at when the change came. Pickett comes in in week four. He has 102 receiving yards. Pickett starts against Buffalo the next week. He has 83 receiving yards. Pickett gets injured in the in right, the Tampa Bay yeah. game and loses and and all of a sudden it's Chase Claypool Trubisky game Pickett comes back last week and he has 61 and a touchdown Pickett seems like he might be the number one receiver Pickens. when or Pickens when Pickett is playing brought to you by Peter Piper Pizza <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about Pat oh the muth is always youth 88 percent completion percentage when Pickett targets the muth. Eight catches last week, and you can play him. Um, he's an every week start. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a tight end that catches the football, so that's saying something. Quick break, and back with the Titans game. The Tennessee Titans at four and two take on the Houston Texans at one four and one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Titans minus two and a half. The over under is forty and a half. That line is a little wild to me. I know that Houston's at home, but Tennessee's four and two. Uh, divisional games, man. I mean, they just surprise you time after time. But just two and a half points to the Titans in this one—that doesn't surprise you. That does surprise me. Uh, you, you would expect Derrick Henry to just absolutely destroy uh, the the thirty second ranked run defense of the. Houston Texans, uh, he's got a history of uh, beating them up, if you will. The last few games, looking at his rushing yards, 250, 212, 211. Like, this should be a smash Derrick Henry game, and they should smash the, the final score as well. Yeah, I, I, you know, Damian Pierce, four straight games with 20-plus opportunities. You play both running backs in this matchup, and you don't play the quarterbacks. But what do you do with the wideouts? Brandon Cooks has yet to have a... You know, a big week. He was the wide receiver 14 in week four. That was his only top 24 finish. What's going on with Brandon Cooks? And, you know, fantasy players have come to expect a lot more than this. Yeah, I I, I can't tell you what is going on. Um, at the beginning of the year, you would have explained it away saying Davis Mills is playing very poorly and the Houston Texans, like, like everything has to go through Damian Pierce because the team is just, they can't throw the ball. But Davis Mills has been better the last couple weeks and that still hasn't translated like Davis Mills had 300 yards and two passing touchdowns last week and Brandon Cooks four for 46 like it's it, he is one of the bigger mysteries to me of this crazy season the targets have gone down started the season with double digit targets in the first few weeks and now five targets six targets the last two weeks this matchup is good enough that I'm willing to continue to bet on Brandon Cooks's history because the Titans have given up a lot of big plays over the top you got Nico Collins gone I'm still willing to throw Brandon Cooks in my lineup so uh on the other side Robert Woods has done nothing I am yeah. not willing to throw Robert Woods in my lineup <laughs> And then the, the tight ends aren't in play here either. So this game does not have a lot of fantasy storylines no. to go over. It's got the Yeti. And What's I have, the, I, do we even worry about Vermont snow levels I, in a game like this? I don't think it matters. I think if it snowed in Vermont, he would have 700 yards and 18 touchdowns. I feel like the, the earth-shattering, you know, the, the, the shock waves of him running over the Texas defense might be enough to, to disrupt weather patterns and cause some snow. Yeah, cause that snow, Mr. Henry. So it's basically play Derrick Henry, definitely play Damian Pierce, and you can play Brandon Cooks. Check out of this game. Yeah. The Washington Commanders at 3-4 and four take on the 3-3-1 three, three and one Indianapolis Colts. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Colts minus three. The over-under is a 39.5. Ooh, nice. And uh, Sam Ellinger is going to start, and, and the reports coming out of Indianapolis, they read like 
Frank Reich wouldn't have done this. Is no, what it reads like. It reads like the the locker room, the head coach, and then Matt Ryan himself. Everybody's shocked. Everybody's dismayed. Everybody wants to support Sam Ellinger in this opportunity. Right. Ellinger. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For those that didn't tune in to Spotify Live, Jason invented a new way to pronounce. Well, we his weren't name. sure if it was Ellinger or Ellinger because we had been confirmed both ways, and so I said just do both, yeah. and then you can't be wrong. And Sam Ellinger was born. Yeah, and uh, hopefully that's also where he died. Yeah. Uh, you know, look, he can he can run, he can get out of the pocket, but I don't. You know, we don't but know. Can what, he play quarterback? But can he play quarterback? <laughs> I mean, this is a this is a Washington defense that has not been good. Schedule adjusted, they're one of the worst against quarterbacks. One of the worst against wideouts. Middle of the pack against running backs. Um, you you can have, you know, much worse matchups to make your debut than this one at home where they're in a division that is, you know, they can still win this division. They're three, three and one. The rest of the division is, is pretty bad. So, you know, Jonathan Taylor, we're still waiting for a big game since week one. Right. It's been, it's been rough. Yeah. And I, we don't know what Ellinger's tendencies are going to be in the passing game. Is he willing to drop that ball off or is he going to tuck it and run the way that, some people think he might. Well, we've seen him in preseason. He does scramble. In college, he had a lot of rushing yards and 33 rushing touchdowns. He's not a supreme athlete, but he he's good enough to scramble around. It, you know, you never saw Matt Ryan. As soon as the offensive line had any pressure, any problems, it was ah, crush um, or, or fumble or uh, interception. So I understand wanting to have a guy that can get out, make some plays happen when uh, the script doesn't go according to plan. That being said, the the offense has already talked about how this is a different style. Like you, you have to run a different offense with Ellinger than than you would Ellinger. Ellinger, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, than you would with Matt Ryan. They're not going to drop back and throw the ball fifty times. They are going to hand this ball off to Jonathan Taylor, Please. over and over and over. If I I don't know what his like DraftKings sportsbook line is for carries. I'll take the over. I really do think that they're just going to give him the ball a ton. I'm terrified for Michael Pittman Jr., uh, for Alec Pierce, for if, if you had picked up Paris Campbell. I, I, I want to see the passing attempts for Ellinger and see if it if, is it going to be – can he get to 30? Can he get yeah, to 30 we're on, passing attempts? we're on watch right now, and at least with Pittman, you know he's the primary. Like when I, when I have a transition like this happen, the biggest fear is, look, Matt Ryan plays his best – they're throwing 40 plus times and multiple receivers are relevant, right? We see we've seen Alec Pierce and spreading Pittman, the ball around. Spreading the ball around. If Ellinger plays his best, I think Pittman is still the only one that you can really count on. You know, Alec Pierce, I cut him this week. I had a better option to put on my roster. I hated to do it, but his ascension is not happening under a an inexperienced quarterback. So Pittman, yeah, we're watching with with some nervousness. So then are you let me throw out a couple names here to see if you would pivot away from Michael Pittman. Would oh, you, boy. Would you play Tyler Boyd yeah. at Cleveland? Yeah. Or, yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. Would you play Devontae Smith in that juicy, yeah. juicy matchup? Or yes, I would. Yeah, I'd play Devontae Smith. I gave up so much to get Michael Pittman. I'm so upset. All right. And then in this matchup, Terry McLaurin, who finally saw a 25% target share for the the his highest target share of the year, was 21% back in week three. Other than that, he's been in the teens. With Ter with uh, uh, Taylor Heineke. Heineke, it was back to let's force feed Terry McLaurin the ball. Would you play him? That one's close. Over Pittman. That one's close. I, I You know, the Colts defense, great against wideouts, giving up 20 a game. I so that, that you're, I think I'm that I'm right on the right fence. I'm okay. right on the fence there. Thank, okay. you, Thank you, Andy. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, you know, speaking of McLaurin, I think you can take your shot there. Curtis Samuel, you can take a shot there in a PPR league. If you're not in full PPR, I'm not excited about Heineke throwing it to Curtis Samuel when the Colts give up 18.7 a game. I would agree with that. But in a full PPR, there are enough manufactured touches for Curtis Samuel drawn up plays. I think he got five carries last week. Yep. Um, so, you know, he's going to touch the ball enough to be to have a to have a baseline, even if his ceiling isn't super high. How are you feeling about Brian Robinson? 17 opportunities, 22 opportunities the last two weeks. They won the ball game uh, last week when he got 22 chances. 
Are you confident enough to, to flex him out in this week? I think that's what he is. He's a flex option. He's touching the ball enough to be fantasy relevant. Uh, I'm not excited because, um, you know, the, the offense doesn't look like one that's going to score a ton of points. Uh, so, you know, right now they're projected for 18.3 fantasy points. I mean, that's fewer than the Houston Texans are projected this week. And 18.3. Or f real total points. points. Yeah, yes. this uh, this is probably a fine matchup with because you have the debut of Ellinger, but the <laughs> but the uh, uh, but Brian Robinson. I think he is he is still in a spot where he will get game scripted out. If the Manders are in, if the Manders are getting blown out, then you you'll see those touches come down. You'll see more Gibson. You'll see more McKissick. And you can play both defenses in this game. Uh, Taylor Heineke is never afraid to throw an interception. And uh, we don't know the tendencies of Sam Ellinger. And I, I do think that they're going to try to protect him. I, I So there's a chance that he doesn't throw the ball that much, doesn't turn the ball over. But also, this is his first NFL start. He has not thrown a, a, a pass as a starter in a regular season game. And, you know, his draft capital is not – he's not some highly touted uh, superstar of the future. Yeah, he looked good in the preseason. Yes. But that Especially is a different ballgame. Especially for ball fantasy because he runs. The 49ers are 3-4, three and four, and they are taking on the 3-3 three and three Los Angeles Rams. DraftKings Sportsbook line here, 49ers. Oh, man. One-and-a-half point favorites on the road. Over-under is 42-and-a-half. I believe seven consecutive games that Kyle Shanahan has won over Sean McVay. Yeah, it's it, Mike. Did you share that graphic yes. with me the other day? I mean, it has been domination. It's a big, big game for this division. Shanahan just has McVay's number. It's wild. You watch these games and just outclass. Now that being said, I mean that streak can't happen forever. Right? Like, they're like that. That's already a crazy streak. So you can bet against it if you want. And if you wanted to bet against it, now might be the time. Solely because you have the Rams coming off of a bye. They have extra time to prepare for this game. Their real strength is their run defense. And the real strength of the San Francisco 49ers is the running game, especially considering I, I don't think Debo Samuel plays this week. Yeah, he did not practice Wednesday or Thursday. So if you've got no Debo Samuel and your, your new shiny object of Christian McCaffrey is going up against the strength run defense of the Rams, maybe the Rams at home off a of bye can actually win this matchup? <sighs> I don't think so. Don't, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to be a glass. I know. I, I get it. And the, the problem is, is this offense for the Rams, I don't know if it's fixed in a bye week, and I don't know if it's fixed going up against the 49ers defense. It could be. It's going to be close. I mean, the line is one and a half. So problem is, is Cooper Cup is like the only guaranteed start on that Rams side of the football, right? I mean, Tyler Higby, look, his time, his window, I think, is going to be closing. It could be. And uh, he's still the he's still relevant for fantasy. It's just Van Jefferson is going to be back soon. Um, uh, Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson, more involved last time out. I I just I'm a little nervous because it's not like Higby hasn't had windows of availability or I mean viability for fantasy players in the past. But the last time out, one uh, two targets, one catch for seven yards. Uh, it makes me a little nervous. I mean, he was. He was good for parts of last year, but Higby's, long stretches of, of limitations, too. Yeah, Higby's always gone in stretches and spurts of being a really important part of this offense. And if you look at the stretch he was on, he was on pace for 163 targets. That's We all know. like there, there's That's an no, accident. There's, there's nobody in the world that would be like, yeah, he's going to finish the year with 163 targets. Right. So if, if he finishes the year with 100 targets, you know that the target numbers are going way down the rest of the way. So, you know, Allen Robinson, nice game last time. I'd be too nervous to start yeah. him in this matchup. Yeah, if you want to sit him on your bench. Um, now, is Brandon, and Ayuka, is Brandon Ayuka a really good start yes. this week? Yes, I think Brandon Ayuk is a very good start. 11 he, targets, two straight weeks. Yeah, I mean, a ton of targets. You don't have Debo Samuel. Where you beat the Rams is against the wide receiver position. They're strong against everything else. I, I, I really do think Brandon Ayuk should probably be started on most rosters that he's on. And then uh, Christian McCaffrey, after a week of practice, you always start him. Oh, yes. Jimmy Garoppolo, a streaming option. T uh, George Kittle, the tight end six and the tight end one the past two weeks. Jason acquired him two weeks ago, so I give you all the credit. Uh, thank you. I hope it keeps up. This isn't a great matchup for tight ends, but when you've got George Kittle, you just play him. the matchups are irrelevant.
The Giants at 6-1 and one take on the 4-3 and three Seattle Seahawks. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Seahawks minus three, because the Giants are always going to be <laughs> underdogs. What is, come on. I think Seattle wins the game. It was, I think it's time. It, it still is like they're 6-1. and one. Yeah. Yeah. I worry a little bit for Seattle's offense uh, with the health of DK Metcalf sure. and Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett's still dealing with the hamstring issue, playing through it. But I he was happy he moved to full practice early in the week. Yeah, that, that, is, that is very, very good because you need him at full health if DK Metcalf isn't there. Uh, we'll never know whether he's truly fully healthy or not, but what we've seen over the last couple of weeks, he hasn't looked the same. Kenneth Walker is very, very good at football. Yeah. It will be a challenge for him this week against the Giants defensive front, but nothing that will make you change whether you're playing him. So, you know, Lockett, Lockett's a, a scary start, but if DK's out, which he should be, I think you can go his you can look his direction. But are you going after Marquise Goodwin? Are you chasing the four for sixty seven and two? I mean, it's just really hard to do that. It feels like a big trap. It feels like there's somebody else in this offense that might be involved. Maybe it's a Disley touchdown week. Maybe it's Noah Fant. You can give it a go, but here, here's here's where I'm at. Let me just yeah, uh, let's hear it. I picked up Marquise Goodwin. Remember last week's double flex of Michael mm -hmm. Gallup yep. and Romeo yep. Dobbs, and we were talking on the waiver show. Well, what about Marquise Goodwin? If if DK Metcalf doesn't play, do you play him over them? And we determined, yeah, we would rather throw Marquise Goodwin in there. Well, I took a deeper dive and a look and the matchups and everything, and I decided I'm going to pick up Mike Gesicki <laughs> and play a double. <laughs> Oh, a Double two tight end. I'm going tight end, so I'm going Gasicki over those other options because I wow. do okay. agree with you. I think Goodwin is it's interesting. a bit of a trap. Well, Saquon on the other side, his worst fantasy finish of the entire year is RB17. Please keep playing him. Daniel Jones. And the matchup. The yes. matchup is so good I against do, the Seahawks. I think that's a, the Seahawks the last two weeks have been much, much better on defense. I'm just going to say that. I think Daniel Jones – because of the way bye weeks worked out, Herbert, Mahomes, you can play him. But the season-long Seahawks, the last couple of weeks, look, if it wasn't for a garbage time, last two-minute Justin Herbert touchdown, he has a disastrous week against them. Kyler Murray had a tough week against them. I'm just throwing it out there that their defense, like teams do change. They do get better. They had a ton of rookies. They have evolved a little bit, and I think that um, – like I said, I think Seattle wins the ball game, and and they're at home. I'm just warning you that I think it, the the floor might be lower than you think on Daniel Jones this week. On Daniel Jones, I would agree. On Saquon, I think against this that was defense. all about Daniel Jones. Yep. Oh, I that's why I was talking about the quarterbacks. Sure, I I was still piggybacking off of the matchup for running backs uh, f for Saquon. There there should be rain in this game as well. I don't know if it will be enough to affect the passing game and promote the running game. But really, the two players you want in this game are Walker and Barkley. So it's kind of like, ooh, a little, little rain, let's go. Sure, and then Wandale Robinson, I think he's startable as a flex player. The The Seahawks, at least, they've been solid against wide receivers over the course of the season, fifth in schedule adjusted points. Uh, but I think that – was the Tony trade yesterday? Yes. Hey, who knows what day it is. But uh, – that and they – most of that reaction was just like, holy crap, Kadarius Tony's going to the Kansas City Chiefs. That's crazy. Uh, and I think we just, in passing, kind of threw out Wandale Robinson. But that's uh, it, that's a big win for He's, Wandale moving forward. He's He is an interesting player. This team has basically nothing at the wide receiver position. It's more, it's more valuable to me in like a long-term dynasty perspective because – Tony wasn't playing this whole year. So it's not like our excitement for Wandale changes from this week because Tony wasn't playing. But your your excitement for Wandale goes down if Kadarius Tony gets back on the of field. Course, and that, of course. Like, that's been all a part of the – what is the value? What is the real value of Wandale Robinson? What's, well, he he was drafted by this regime, uh, but Kadarius Tony can be back, and he's a good player. So I, I think it's a, a, it's a, it's a big, bigger deal for Wandale – because immediately his his value just sustains and goes up as he gets more integrated into the offense. I, I think it, it locks him in as the number one target for the rest of the season for this team. I don't necessarily think that the number one target for the Giants and Daniel Jones is fantasy gold, especially out of the slot and a player like Wandale. But 
you know, I would expect the rest of the season him to average 10 targets a game because it's not going to, we know it's not Sterling Shepard. He's gone. We know it's not Kenny Galladay. He retired. We know it's not uh, Kadarius Tony. They literally traded him. So, uh, you know, David Sills and Richie James well, they, and Darius Slayton, uh, Darius Slayton might have a bigger fantasy day when he catches a bomb touchdown, but I think the main wide receiver one for the Giants is Wandale rest of the season. Yeah, I'll push back. I don't think that's the case. I think they're a prime candidate to pick somebody up and and Wandale somebody up like free to sign a free agent? No. A trade. Like make a trade before the deadline. Wandale I'm I'm just throwing it out there like Wandale having a good game. You know, six targets. That's 50 yards. That's if he doesn't get into the end zone. I mean, he got in the end zone 2 weeks ago. That's wide receiver 27. I don't I think he's pretty capped what? as a possession receiver. So full PPR, I like him. I do not think he's going to be Super meaningful. I will push back on your pushback, sir. Uh, two weeks ago when he was the wide receiver 27 with that touchdown, he played 23% of the snaps in his first game back from injury. Then he moved up to a very nice 69% of snaps, led the team in targets with eight. And I, uh, going forward, I mean, if, if he ends up with six, seven, eight receptions a game, he's going to be a very reliable PPR option. I, I think he's more of a PPR play than, than – you know, half or standard. I just don't see him hey, not demanding targets. Said. Yeah, yeah, but it, I mean, he's essentially played two games mm -hmm. and really just one, which was last week. So I'm, I'm trying to project for the future of someone who can really gain value here. Yeah, well, Wondell Robinson's in contention. Green Bay, Buffalo, Sunday Night Football, Packers, eleven point underdogs on the road. The over under is forty seven and a half. By the way, Jerry Judy was the name being mentioned with the Giants. Uh, we'll see. They've shown particular interest, according to beat reporters. They do have an extra third or third yeah, and a sixth. Yeah, yeah, that was a big trade for them. Uh, Bills, heavy favorites. Packers implied point totals eighteen. The over under is forty seven and a half. I Dude, mean, starting Packers right now this, is is that's what I'm gag uh, I'm giggling at. It's the Green Bay Packers. And Aaron Rodgers is still the quarterback. And I'm looking through them, and I want to start nobody from that team on the road against the Buffalo Bills. And what a insane place to be. That like, If Lazard were active and healthy, maybe I would be like, okay, I guess my wide receiver three this week is Alan Lazard. But he's, he's going to miss. He called himself doubtful. The Lizard King, no thanks. Romeo Dobbs and his and the drops and the lack of trust and even Aaron Jones is like eight for 23 on the ground yeah he had the 10 targets but can I don't think can, you can, can set him but he's again? the only one I want to play yeah I but I, I and I don't want to play him but I guess I will yeah I mean you're let's, not gonna I mean, start Rodgers right correct we, he doesn't have weapons names. to throw the ball to and he's playing against a great defense on the road in Buffalo the ever popular, should I start this running back? Would you play Raheem Mostert against the Detroit Lions? Oh, of course. Yeah, well above oh. Aaron Jones. Okay. Would you play Devin Singletary on the other side of the ball or Aaron Jones? No, I'd play Aaron Jones. Yeah, I would as well. I I currently have Devin Singletary ranked higher. Would you play, uh, let's see, is there a good name here? I mean, Aaron Jones caught nine passes last week. I, he, I Yeah. But what, what has he been doing before that through the air? Well, I mean, he's had two huge games this year. I just think the pedigree, the history of Aaron Jones over outweighs the Devin Singletary. It's not like Singletary's had all good games this year. Yeah, and you don't know how Singletary's going to be used in this game. It was a little bit easier to predict when you uh, had a game against the Kansas City Chiefs and you knew it was going to be competitive. This game might not be competitive, and if it's not, usually in those games, even though that's a, a boon for the running back one, Oftentimes for Devin Singletary, when it's not competitive, then they bring other people out. This is a, a team that is also, you know, has the chance to uh, bring James Cook more involved, get him more snaps in a in a game like this. Uh, this is the time of year where those rookies get more involved. So I I I lean for the Aaron Jones always has the opportunity for an explosive game, even in a bad matchup. So I I would go him over over Singletary. All right, Stephon Diggs. Yes, Gabe Davis. Yes. Gabe Davis, number one, number 13 the last two weeks, was 12 in week one, was injured in between. We hope that it continues. 
he is big play dependent right now. Yeah, he's big play dependent and big play magnetic. <laughs> so he was uh <laughs> he had two touchdowns two weeks ago, one touchdown last week. <clears throat> what I'm gonna be watching for in this game uh is James Cook and Khalil Shakir, specifically the the timeshare between Isaiah McKenzie and Khalil Shakir, the wide receivers in the slot. Yep. I want to see coming out of the bye, do they work those rookies more into the game plan? Um, or is this just, you know, if Isaiah McKenzie's back to full health, is he just the dude? Uh, I think it'll be really telling for potential value beyond this game. I'm not starting either one of them in this matchup. Though. Dawson Knox. No, thank you. Uh. <laughs> is there a chance that he gets more? I mean, he I got mean, another week off from the injury was the number 10 tight end last time we saw him. I'm just curious if he could trend the right direction. I, I don't I don't think so. They've they've used him as a blocker a lot this season. I mean, he was the number 10 tight end with what? Uh, 37 yards. He had a big yards. touchdown down the field. Right. So three targets, uh three receptions. Uh he's just not involved enough in the passing game to to have me. There's we named a bunch of guys yesterday on, you know, uh, the the matchups and the starts of the week that I would much rather have, like a Gasicki off of waivers. You think, I, you think there's any chance he gets more involved after the bye, the way Shakir, Knox. what you're watching with Shakir? And well, Shakir and, and Cook, I think that that's when you have the, the ability to take these rookies who weren't involved and get them more involved. I mean, it, it's not like he hasn't been involved. He's been on the field 86% of snaps, 85% of snaps before the bye week. It's just a matter of how they're using him. And I, I think it's a Gabe Davis problem for him. Like, they didn't have... The, they didn't have an, an another elite touchdown threat last year. You had Stephon Diggs, and then you know uh, who was Emmanuel Sanders, and, and just guys who aren't a a huge body like this. Uh, Gabe Davis is a is a big boy. The Cincinnati Bengals four and three take on the two and five Cleveland Browns on Monday Night Football. They'll be without Jamar Chase. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Bengals minus three. The over under is forty five. Joe Burrow, back-to-back, -back, quarterback one weeks. Three passing touchdowns in each of them. Zach Taylor, please, please let it continue. I think it will mostly continue. I don't. This is not like a switch, right? You don't have like two modes where you switch it to one side and it's pass heavy and you switch it to the other side and it's run heavy. There, there's nuance here, Joe Burrow. They've been successful you're certainly going to have an opportunity on Monday Night Football to be successful, and T. Higgins is a one. I mean, T. Higgins is a one on any other team in the NFL. So I think, yeah, maybe you work a very, you know, important Joe Mixon into the ball game, but I wouldn't bench Burrow or have not, great fears of his utilization. I'm not, I'm not benching him certainly, but the the concern of, I mean, they they had that run switch on at the beginning of the year when Joe Burrow was not fantasy friendly and and Joe Mixon was getting a a billion carries every game so just it it's possible to go back but you're not you're not benching any of these players Joe Burrow is in T Higgins is in where do you guys have what what is your kind of gut reaction to T Higgins over this stretch we again we we don't know fully what, what yet yeah, what's going on with Jamar Chase he's not on the IR as of right now but if he is that's a full month of games where do you have T Higgins kind of is he a top 12 play, yeah, I, a top I, 10 play. Top 10. Yeah, I would have him as okay. a top 10 option. He is, like Andy said, he is a wide receiver one in real life. He's only the wide receiver two on his team because of Jamar Chase, who's now gone. So you have the number one target, the clear number one target, a talented player for Joe Burrow for a Bengals team coming off a Super Bowl that looks like they could get back to a Super Bowl. So I'm fully in on T. Higgins, and I'm quite a bit in on Tyler Boyd through this next month-long stretch and Mixon keeps dealing with touchdown issues Joe Burrow scored three straight times uh on the ground so three straight weeks so that's been a problem but Mixon has been still pretty good for fantasy purposes got in the end zone last week Hayden Hurst is a good play uh but uh, he's got a groin and ankle yeah. injury ah, my groin yeah I mean he's his targets will go up without Jamar Chase as well and he's He's been relevant enough to be in the mix for a streaming option. The other side of the ball, I think the real big interesting question here is Kareem Hunt. Mike and I were looking at the utilization, uh, the fact that he's, even though the last two weeks have been just... The touches are way down. Yeah, he's not touching the ball much. He's actually playing the same amount of snaps. Uh, Stefanski came out and talked about 
like th- it was bad luck. <laughs> like he, right. they're not trying to go away from him. And so I, I believe it more because of the fact that the snap counts kind of back that up. So whatever Kareem Hunt was doing before, I expect him to touch the ball a similar amount. But it's a bad, bad matchup this week. The Bengals defense is very good. And, um, you know, Cincinnati's favored by three on the road here. There's a couple teams, Cleveland, Denver, that if they lose this week, I'm pretty sure they're fire sailing some of these players. I mean, Judy, Hunt, oh, Will Oh, be- Bengals. Hamler. <laughs> I mean, I think those guys are gone. Oh, man. If the Bengals can beat the Browns and Kareem Hunt can go to a – Good offense that wants to give him the ball 20 times a game. Let's go. Keep your eye on Harrison Bryant. Yeah. I wouldn't play him, but you can keep your eye on him in a uh, less likely situation, you know, like a, a necessary, Mr. Necessary situation. He, Donovan Peoples-Jones as well without David and Joku. Donovan Peoples-Jones has been more involved. Mike said it last week, and then, uh, you know, he had six more targets, caught all six of them. Been over 70 yards three or four weeks. Harrison Bryant was I – mean, he was only a fourth-round pick because he was coming out of a smaller school, but he was like he was an, a very interesting uh, prospect, an award-winning tight end. So I, I am keeping an eye on him that with those tendencies of Jacoby Brissett, does that just kind of keep moving, moving forward where David Njoku was – he was he was very involved in the offense. Do they com- completely shift away from that, or do they get Bryant five plus targets? Mike and I are starting Harrison Bryant. We in are our dynasty league. We don't have uh, really a choice. No. I wouldn't be super <laughs> excited, but, no, uh, but hey, but, let's root for him. But we'll be watching. Well, uh, ranking starts at two on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. dot com. Oh, I'm so excited! Oh, right. yeah. It's time. Fantasy Faceoff, presented by DraftKings. What a delightful week it is. One in which I won and did not lose. Mm-hmm. And Mike lost and did not win. I'm I'm very excited. I'm I'm happy. Are you? Oh, yeah, you you're looking forward to this. I am just happy for you. Thank you. Because yeah, no, I, I, I had, had a great the week. Streak, had the record setting streak mm. continued yet mm. again. We may have lost you for the season. Do I get like a, uh, any sort of like immunity for multiple weeks because no. my team scored 200? No. Okay. No, you just, don't. Just going for that. All right, let's do it, Mike. You ready for this wheel? Bring it to me. Wheel of Shame. All right. Spin well, this the should wheel. be fun. Spin that wheel of shame. All right. Uh, banana face safety first. Joe oh, Dirt. Joe Dirt. And uh, bust. Boston. <laughs> Wait, am you I Rob, am are, I Rob Gronkowski? You are busted, Mike. Oh, oh busted. no. You're in big <laughs> trouble. Okay, so that's, they are bringing me handcuffs. Well, that's not all. Those are the last step. No, 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 Jason. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Let I him guess put on he the does rest. need his hands. Let him put on the rest of his... <laughs> put on his outfit you are here, okay? uh, busted for committing some sort of crime mike my lineup was a crime last week <laughs> yeah it was and uh yeah, no joe burrow what an idiot <laughs> get your ski mask on oh boy oh, oh man, yeah this is... this is everything i dreamed <laughs> of all and the then hair coming out you need to put your your gloves on because otherwise you're not busted the hair is a real situation right now oh i was gonna go <laughs> oh, you got the gloves first oh. here we oh got he, he can't on. see he can barely breathe i don't think you'd be a good robber mike i you know well usually if i was gonna rob a place i would have this i'd have more time and i wouldn't be doing this live oh i mean your hair is not conducive for a ski mask nor is my beard (laughs) (laughs) all the hair popping out of the this is so good eye holes and mouth hole can we get rob gronkowski rob gronkowski Uh, saying busted again do we have that in a second okay Okay. well not so tight there friend goodness gracious okay i'm in (laughs) (laughs) oh this is wonderful Let's kick off our lineups. <laughs> oh, you look so dumb. I'm going with Daniel Jones at quarterback. 50, but I feel great. So 50, Daniel Jones. 5,700 against Seattle. Wait, I, what's all this Daniel Jones the, floor talk? Yeah. Well, no, it's it's extremely risky, but he's extremely cheap compared to the options I like more. What's so, his price? 5,700. Okay. So, look, if, it, if I could have afforded it with the rest of this roster, I actually would have gone Tua. 
but I I had to make some choices. And Daniel Jones has a bad floor that could cost me the week, but he has a rushing upside that could help me. So I'm going that direction. All right, I paid up. I did it, and I Ooh. put in Jalen Hurts, even though he was 8300 in this week's lineup. See I, how expensive that is? It is very, very expensive. I had to go with some cheap options elsewhere for sure, but you know, usually in these cash game lineups, whoever has the best quarterback ends up usually winning. Boston! <laughs> Mike, you're, you're up. Uh, I paid the lowest price of any of us because I went with... Andrew Dalton. Yeah. Ooh. We're live here. Three different quarterbacks. Hold on. At 5,500 against the Las Vegas Raiders who have not yet, not yet allowed anybody to finish outside of the top 10 at the quarterback position. One thing that I was able to do with Daniel Jones at the quarterback position was load up on big boys. Derrick Henry, Saquon oh, Barkley. No. Oh, no. Derrick Henry and Saquon, 8,400, 8,100. Both guys in my lineup against Houston and Seattle. This beard situation is uh, The Derrick Henry play is great. One of those could be a, a slate breaker if he goes for 204, which he's capable of doing. I as well have Saquon Barkley. I've got another big boy there uh, at 8,100. And I have Tony Pollard Ooh. at 6,100 against of course you do. the Chicago Bears. I have uh, DeAndre Swift in his return at 6,800 in that matchup against the Miami Dolphins. I really like that matchup as potential for a shootout. And then I have the new king, Kenneth Walker, at 6,500 against the New York Giants. The matchup isn't great. However, if you look at the line on DraftKings Sportsbook, Ken Walker's rushing prop is 79.5, while Barkley's is 83.5, and, and yet Kenneth Walker is thousands cheaper. All right, at wide receiver? going to be interesting i went with jalen waddle at 6700 okay he is listed as questionable if for some reason he was declared out i have Devonte smith as a pivot uh wandale robinson for 4700 is locked into my lineup and george pickens for 4700 is my other wide receiver so you've okay. got the triple giant stack right the i do daniel jones saquon barkley wandale robinson i have wandale robinson as well at 4700 Alongside him, another forty-seven hundred dollar uh, wide receiver had to do this thanks to Jalen Hurts uh, up top, which is George Pickens. Hoping that uh, with Kenny Pickett, uh, didn't really listen to my line. No, what? Why? When he said he had George Pickens? And oh, I did not listen to that part. <laughs> yeah, I, I was noticed. Focused I know on you're. The are you distracted by the uh, the, the masked man with I'm the beard flowing through his mouth hole <laughs> with all the the. <laughs> hair that's popping out of the places it shouldn't be. I'm real comfortable though. Thanks for asking. And uh, at, my wide receiver one is Chris Olave. Only six thousand dollars seems very undervalued there. You know I got Chris Olave if I got Andy Dalton in there, so I got that stack rolling. Then I have the new improved. He's back, baby. DeAndre Hopkins at seventy four hundred against the Minnesota Vikings. Let's get ten plus targets. And then I'm <laughs> I'm riding the snake. With DJ Moore, yeah, coming in at fifty three hundred against the Atlanta Falcons, the absolute juiciest of matchups for wide receivers. Let's see if Walker can do it one more week. Wow, that's impressive. Uh, my flex is Tony Pollard at sixty one hundred. Me too. So we all have Tony <laughs> Pollard. Yeah, and then my tight end Noah Fant at twenty eight hundred, trying to make up for the absence of DK Metcalf there. Very cheap, and I went with the Panthers defense against Atlanta at twenty eight hundred. I have the uh, Manders defense uh, against the Sam Ellinger-led yes. uh, Colts. My flex is Raheem Mostert, only down at 5,900 against Detroit. Should be a smash play. And I went with Irv Smith Jr., only $3,500 yep. against that Arizona Cardinals team that gives up a lot to the tight end position. Yeah, I, I went back and forth with, do you go Tony Pollard or Raheem Mostert? But I stuck with Tony Pollard uh, because I, you know, I respect the game, and I didn't want to have a, a late change there, mm -hmm. unlike some people in this room. This was uh, my lineup yesterday. <laughs> and the tight end, I got Mike Gesicki at 3,800. See if we can get uh, some correlation there with that Miami-Detroit game. All right, that was Fantasy Faceoff and presented. And I have uh, Please be quiet there, sir. You are, uh, you are awesome. under arrest. <laughs> That was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and use the promo code BALLERS. 
to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That is the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Um, by the way, the uh, the report that we have on Ezekiel Elliott being out, that comes uh, from 105.3 The Fan, their Twitter handle, through an interview with Jerry Jones, who is generally tied into what is happening on Sunday morning. But that is the report that we had on Zeke missing the game. Uh, so there you go. Also, the Halloween show. Oh. It is going to be a spectacular event. It is Monday. Which is unfortunate because I'm dressing as a burglar. On Monday? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, you blew my big surprise. Boston. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that'll do it for today's episode of the podcast. Thank you for tuning in, supporting the show. Thank you for your reviews. And to everybody at jointhefoot.com for supporting this independent podcast. Mike, say goodbye. Time to escape. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.